Hello everybody, and welcome to the lucky number 13 episode of Just One More Podcast. I am Jeff from Just One More Level, and of course, John is with me again today. How are you doing, John? I am exhausted. <laughs> it seems it seems like that's kind of the, uh, the, the recurring thing. I don't really play a whole lot of games, and you're tired. Yeah, well, you know, based on when we record this, you know, this is like Sunday <laughs> evening. Uh, yeah. We just got back from my parents a little bit ago and, you know, uh, ran around with Jack, hit the baseball around, hit the, kicked the soccer ball, went fishing, just exerted tons of energy. Well, um, for oh, the and, most and, part... and getting up at five doesn't help either. <laughs> I, yeah, starting your day off really, really early uh, tends to lead to probably having an early night's uh, sleep yeah it was like uh i think this is among the earliest he he's awoken and it's like oh mr rogers neighborhood is still on tv it airs at five in the morning on pbs <laughs> well so uh for the most part i i've i've been sinking a lot of time into yakuza like a dragon so not a lot of uh, different games being played on on my side. Uh, wrapped up chapter nine. I'm healthily moving through uh, chapter ten. Uh, there is fifteen chapters in the game, so as far as like like a dragon. Uh, just to specify for anybody out there, Yakuza like a dragon. Um, just really enjoying the game. Like the the story is is crazy and out there the, the, the plots are, are good the, the characters are amazing the, the combat is, is awesome just cannot heap enough praise onto uh, Yakuza like a dragon um, and everybody should play it and try it like it is such a good um, modern turn based RPG um, but Outside of that, I did boot up the Harvestella demo. Oh, okay. Um, I I've I've been a little bit on the fence with with this. Like I, I when I think it was during one of Nintendo's uh, directs that they did earlier this year, I believe, uh, where Harvestella really got you know shown off. Yeah, I and think it, I, I think it debuted in a direct, and maybe they had like a Treehouse uh, plays event where they went more in depth into it. Yeah, um, I I've been on the fence because I'm I'm not really into like that Harvest Moon that simulation like life simulation thing. Like, can't get into Stardew Valley, can't get into Harvest Moon. I there was only one Animal Crossing game that I was able to get into, and I, I think that was just because I uh, was able to kind of bounce uh, bounce off of you a little bit with it with uh, back yeah, on the Wii. And we're playing City Folk concurrently. Yeah, always helps to have yeah. someone else playing. Um, but with with Harvestella, just the you know it, it, it's billed as a like Harvest Moon meets Final Fantasy, where you're taking care of a, of a town and and you know trying to raise the, the town, but also going out to dungeons and fighting monsters and you know. RPG elements in, in that regard, so I've I've been a little bit interested in it. Um, I downloaded the the demo, but haven't been able to really play the demo until this last week. Um, and I, I know you and I we we talk about how you know RPGs from the PlayStation Two era. We we kind of reference back to that a couple times, especially with the Divine Force coming out uh, you know very soon. Um, the game looks like and kind of plays like an early PS2 title. Sold. Um, yeah, the the soundtrack is awesome. Like the the the, I'm assuming the theme for I, I think it's pronounced Leith or Leith Village. Um, there's no voice acting as, as far as what I can tell. Like there's no no voice acting so. I'm not really sure if that's how you pronounce it, but it's like L E T E or it's L E T H E village, so like Leith or Leith village. Um, the, the the theme for that is really good. Like there's a lot of flute involved, and it it just sounds really relaxing and peaceful and just really nice. 
Um, but yeah, it is just based on, I think I've done about 30, 30 ish minutes, uh, maybe 40 minutes of, of the demo. Um, and it's supposed to go up through chapter two or until uh, 15 days have passed since starting to play. Um, I, I can't remember if that's in game or not, but anyway. Um, so I think. Well, I, I imagine it'd be in game. <laughs> I mean, I I would I would hope so. I just remember seeing uh, it goes through uh, chapter two, or until fifteen days have passed. Um, I mean, do days pass in the demo? Uh, I have not seen anything that keeps track of like in game time. Hmm. So I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure, but uh, in a fairly common fashion with uh, Square Enix titles as far as the demos go. Anything that you do in this demo, that content or that save data gets carried over to the, the full release, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, the like camera controls, running, like uh, going around the, the town, just interacting with people, like it is very much like an early uh, PlayStation 2 title. Um, probably even before like Final Fantasy X, so maybe like that first, that actual first year of the PlayStation Two being on the market. And so, I mean, what what distinguishes it in your mind from like the first generation of PlayStation Two titles versus later PlayStation Two titles? Um, I, a lot of it is just um, how clunky it is, like moving the character around. The the, the camera doesn't the, the camera doesn't move at all unless you move it. Um, so like you're having to do a lot of like jumping between buttons and analog sticks to be able to, to navigate around. Um, and then just how like the, the characters, uh, look and react to each other. Um, just very, very, very basic animation type stuff. Um, and the writing is a little weird. Um, obviously it, it's, it's a... It's an RPG, so the main character um, suffers from amnesia. Um, so, of course, you you end up going back to that trope. Uh, the, the, there's a little bit of a... Like, there's, there's this thing called the quietus. And it's like this supposedly, like, world-ending thing. Or, like, it, it just it kills people on sight. It's dust that gets into the air... Um, during one of the what they call the season of death which i don't know what season that is they, they say there's four seasons and the season of death is one of those four you know spring um, summer fall death yeah yeah you know they just it, it, it's just one of those those natural occurring uh seasons um and so the the quietus when when it happens if you're outside you've you end up breathing in this this dust from what they call the the uh, sees light, which is this giant crystal, out in the distance. It's it glows this like red, violetish color. Um, and if you breathe in the dust, you typically die. Well, the main character apparently doesn't die, even though the main character is out during the quietus and inhales the dust from this crystal thing. Witch. So, We've got a witch over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, it for the most part, and uh, so another thing that I've noticed, and I, I played it, um, I've pretty much played it exclusively in handheld mode because um, uh, I, I hooked the PS4 back up to the main TV uh, out in the living room um, so that Corey and I can play like Overwatch and stuff from time to time. Um, so I, I was playing the, the demo on... Uh, in pretty much exclusively handheld mode and I noticed as I got up to like NPCs they would just be fuzzy and blurry um, the main character wouldn't the main character would look like the typical like bravely default style uh, uh, art style but every NPC that was just a non-important character would be fuzzy and I don't really know I don't know if that's because of it being in handheld mode or if that's just a design choice that they're going with. Yeah, maybe they're all um, just a little moldy. <laughs> I mean, it could be. It, I, they they literally have a season called death, so they 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 may just be, you know, not able to live their their best life. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of where where I'm at. Um, 
Weirdly enough. So it sounds enough. like the demo didn't sell you on it. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm good. I, I, like I said, I was kind of interested going into it, and the demo. Yeah, I mean, kind of interested kind going of into it, but against it. not really the type of guy game you ever clicked with. Yeah, and and the demo really didn't uh, change. has hasn't really changed my my opinion of uh, or my like. It, it hasn't converted me. Um, so between the demo and Yakuza Like a Dragon, which I'm kind of surprised as far as Like a Dragon goes, I think there's still two or three more characters for me to get access to for my party. I'm in chapter ten. I don't have my the full party yet, so I'm I'm really wondering when I get these these last two or three characters, just just based on uh, looking at the the trophy list. Um, there's two or three more characters that I should I should be getting, and since it's a fifteen chapter game, I'm kind of wondering like they they've got to be popping in pretty soon. Um, because I think I'm about halfway through chapter 10 and I still don't have uh, any of... Like, I've met those characters. I just haven't been able to play as those characters. They haven't been part of my, my, my squad yet. Hmm. Um, so that's that's pretty much what, what I've, I've been uh, sinking my time into. And hopefully, I'm fingers crossed, I managed to finish Like a Dragon before Star Ocean, the, the Divine Force, comes out. Because yeah, I what, really don't want to put that on the back for Star Ocean. Yeah, I, I think yeah, it's October twenty seventh, which okay. I I I just pre ordered the game uh, through Target. Yeah, so. so we got two and a half weeks. Uh, yeah, it'd be plenty of time. I mean, I'm hoping so. I'm I'm still trying to do as much as I can in the game, but I'm trying not to get too bogged down as far as like a, a completionist run. Um, yeah, I don't know so, why, but I've had a bug in my butt to play Eternal Sonata. Really? Where yeah. did that come from? <laughs> I don't know. I I think I just get this I get this urge to play Eternal Sonata every now and then, <laughs> and it just popped That's... up again. And then it's kind of like thinking, you know, well, I'm nearly done with Star Wars Jedi uh, Fallen Order. I wonder if I have enough time to beat Eternal Sonata before Star Ocean comes out. And I don't think I do, so I don't know that I'll play it. But it, I don't I, think it's too long of a game, but I, no. I think it's it's decent. Yeah, I mean, it looks like I think it's like you know twenty to forty hours if I'm just mainlining the story, and then like sixty to eighty if I was going to go for the completion. Um, I I mean I have done the research to see okay, well you know how long is it? Um, there was the original three hundred and sixty release, and then the enhanced PlayStation three version. What are the differences between those two? Uh, because of course I have both. Um. In fact, you know, I got the 360 version on one of our St. Louis trips at a Toys R Us. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course. Um, and it was funny. I was like, okay, this morning I was talking to my wife. I'm like, uh, check this out. And i like, I got Eternal Sonata for both 360 and PS3. You could do a comparison between the two. Yeah. What surprised me, though, I don't ever remember getting the PS3 one, but apparently uh, I got it from... GameStop for five bucks back in the day, and so then it's just me thinking, man, I paid five bucks for this. That's awesome. That was a that was a hell of a deal. <laughs> but well, uh, Eternal Sonata, uh, and trying to also like figure out, okay, well, if I play this, which version am I going to play? You know, I was reading through the differences. The three, the PS3 version did offer like two additional characters that you can play as. They're in the game normally, but you can actually play as them in the PS3 version. It added, like, two extra dungeons at the end game, and then it also scaled the difficulty up and made things di more difficult, and then enemies also gave you less experience, less rewards, and I think they did that as an incentive because they thought, hey, some people will be coming to this after playing the 360 version. Let's make it, you know, a, a more of a challenge and, you know, different enough to maybe warrant a second playthrough. But... It also released at a time when PlayStation 3 did not have universal trophies, so that version actually does not have trophies. Oh, yeah. So that so was... So you, you, you could play it and not have to, you know, try to grind out any trophies in it. Yeah, not have to worry about that. And then uh, I will look through the, you know, I, I will look through, I don't know when I'm going to play it, but I will look through the achievements for it to see, like, what we're, what we're talking about, what we're dealing with, if it's going to be, you know, relatively 
easy to go through or you know maybe it's going to be something where i'm going to be content just doing one playthrough getting as many as i can or if it'd be something like star ocean where it's going to require like eight playthroughs and it's like okay well i'm definitely going to be content doing one playthrough <laughs> yeah well and that's uh you know kind of going back to our our uh play sessions of elden ring being able to figure out that i don't have to play the game like three separate times to get those the three different endings Mm -hmm. Uh, It was really nice because, um, because yeah, like I I don't uh, even I was dreading that, but I would also think it wouldn't be too much of an ordeal because I think on those new game pluses, new game plus playthroughs, I think you can probably just power through if you're going for like one specific thing. It's like okay, I just need to go do this ending. I just need to rush in the quickest order possible. I'm going to be powered up. I'm going to knock this stuff out. And, you know, with all the stuff that does carry over, it, it wouldn't be as big of a hassle as if you were just starting completely fresh. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, even even games that I I absolutely love, like Final Fantasy X, The Legend of Dragoon, Lost Odyssey, uh, Star Ocean, uh, Till the End of Time, even though I, like, really, really love those games... Um, Typically, I, I might, well, back in the day after playing them for the first time, I might do a second playthrough just like right after finishing it, but um, I, I, I can't imagine like being like, ah, oh, man, I've got to go through this game eight times back to back, like to just try to get whatever trophies I need or completionist or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so It's like, man, that's impressive, it, but... I am yeah. I am not in high school anymore. Yeah, and and you know you you and I we've talked about this uh, fairly often over the last year or two. Like as we get older, we get less and less time to play. So it's like, do I really want to spend time playing something either multiple times that I've already played and beat and and enjoyed, or do I want to try to experience something new and if I don't like the experience, I'm probably not going to spend a whole lot of time continuing to suffer through it unless it's a short enough game like a Kills on Shadowfall, for instance. Yeah, I mean, I spend an, an I spend a lot of time daydreaming about playing JRPGs and less time actually starting them. That's why <laughs> that's like with yeah. Eternal Sun on. It's like, oh man, I mean, I've wanted to play this since the demo came out back in the day. It's like I liked it then. It's like, hey, I, I will That's, play it at some point. That was, was that a two, did, did that come out in 2006, 2007 yeah, time I, frame? I think it was, it was 2006 or 2007 on the 360 and then a year later on the PS3. But I want to say it was pretty early in the 360 lifespan. Because I, I, I know like pretty much in that first two to three years of the 360 being out, like it had a fairly impressive JRPG library. Yeah, I mean, um, Microsoft did a good job courting the uh, Japanese games, and you know at least getting you know one year exclusivity deals on them. You know it's kind of the same thing with Eternal Sonata as it was with like Tales of Vesperia. I think an enhanced mm-hmm. version of that. Am I? And Star Ocean: The Last Hope. Or yeah, maybe maybe it was just Star Ocean that came out. You know, a year later with a few extra features on the PS3. Maybe Tales of Vesperia never did. I could swear it did. Maybe I'm thinking of Tales of Symphonia on the GameCube. I know. I, I think Vesperia got like an enhanced or like a remastered something on like PS4 and Xbox One. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Tales of Vesperia is released everywhere now. Yeah. I don't know if it ever came to PS3 though. It it, it may have been one of those very rare RPGs or JRPGs that never saw the light of day on the PS3. Um, no, yeah, it had this. Yeah, that's right. It did have the same sort of thing where you know a year later it it had an enhanced oh. version on the PS3, but I don't think that version ever came out over here. I think that's where I was getting confused. Yeah, that was Japan only. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, but yeah, like within that first two to three years, like Microsoft was like, we are going to make a splash in the Japanese market, and like in comparison to like how the original Xbox did in Japan. The 360 did pretty well over there. Yeah. yeah um, I mean, you know, reading up on Eternal Sonata, whenever that debuted in Japan, it was number two on the charts. And I think it's, you know, it sold like a respectable amount by year's end. 
and I think that was the case with you know basically every time one of the JRPGs launched, JRPGs launched, it's like hey, uh, a 360 title topped the charts in Japan. <laughs> and I mean, like Microsoft was making, and and this is one thing that that uh, kind of baffles me in regards to Sony, like Sony seems to be giving up on that market. Um, where like Nintendo is dominant over there, like there's no question. Nintendo is a powerhouse over in in Japan, and especially now that they've put all of their focus into a platform that is portable. Um, like Nintendo is is going to reign supreme over there. Um, but like Sony had, and I mean even to this day, still has a pretty like pretty decent sized market over there that once more PlayStation stuff. So it's kind of weird that Sony seems to be retreating from that territory while Microsoft is like, oh, no, we are we are, we are are trying this again. We are trying to get ourselves back into that market. Um, and which, I, think, I think beyond just getting them into that market, it also appeals to people outside that market, you know, like you and I who are yeah. into JRPGs or games of, like, Japanese origin. It's like what we're seeing them put out on Game Pass here lately with, you know, the, hey, Persona games are coming to Game Pass. Hey, <laughs> yeah. here's Nino Kuni. Um, like Yakuza, like, like a dragon is on there. Yeah, they have like the Final the Fantasy games. games, like 13, 13, 2, Lightning Returns. Those were on Game Pass. I, I, I don't think they're on Game Pass now, but, um, but they were on, on Game Pass. Um, like it, it just, it seems like a, a weird, weird, like Japan is a major market for gaming. I, I don't really understand the, the idea of, uh, retreating from that market now. Granted, I mean, obviously, I don't see like the the profit and loss statements of the different you know regions and stuff. But I just I feel like when you provide a market with what they want, they buy it. And yeah. like, I wonder if Microsoft- the the sort of games that Sony is all in on right now, if those do well in Japan. Like I think Ghost of Tsushima did well. And in part yeah. because that is based in Japan, it's kind of they look at it like, hey, these are outsiders making a game about us. Let's check it out. Yeah, and you know, they, are they did really well. Yeah, are they big into like the real cinematic single player story experiences like The Last of Us or God of War? That's I I, I know God of War tends to do pretty well over there. I don't know about The Last of Us. I think that might be a little too westernized for kind of like the the, the Japanese taste. But, you know, it's just looking at the 360 and just seeing, like, the, the efforts that uh, that Microsoft is trying to make with, um, the with like, Game Pass. And, and the, the Series S is really driving a lot of the sales for Microsoft this generation. Um, one, because it's small. And two, it's cheaper. It's cheap. Than, uh, I mean, for the for the price of the series or for the price of the Switch, you can you know get a, a Series S um, and have access to you know a, a growing library, and like Microsoft or at least with Phil Spencer uh, during TGS, like they're they're doing like decent size, uh, I mean almost E three type of like uh, events over there. Like with TGS, Microsoft went out and they did a big showing uh, this year in in uh, for. Uh, Tokyo Game Show this year. So Microsoft is really, they're like, we want to be a global name when it comes to Xbox. We we don't want to just be, you know, a, a, a player in in the American market and then kind of flounder everywhere else. Um, and yeah, like, like what you said, if they're going and they're courting these Japanese developers and publishers to get more stuff on Xbox, well... You and I are interested in that, and we're not the only ones that are outside of Japan that want to see more JRPGs, you know, brought outside of Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, but so well, anyway, yeah. uh, with that kind of, kind of same story as you, you know, mostly playing a game. Uh, I've just been trucking along with uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Um, pretty much same thoughts as last time. You know, just fantastic production values like amazing graphics amazing character story all that um the combat i have kind of warmed up to that a little bit more i still am not too smitten with it i think it's just the fact that i've 
uh, invested in the skill tree enough to where I'm really powerful um, or have good, uh, good cool abilities. Uh, you know, the enemies are still tough. It's not like I'm just cheesing through them all now, but uh, it does seem like it's maybe a little more balanced. There are some cool uh, skills you unlock. Of course, again, like I said last time, you know, just getting to use the force and a lightsaber, using those in unison, uh, very fun. Uh, getting Metroidvania style uh, skill unlocks like a double jump, aka the Jedi flip. It's pretty cool. So just kind of uh, getting pretty familiar with it. Like I, I think in the last episode, you were kind of you, there was some, I can't remember what it was, but uh, you said that there was something that you just couldn't quite get the timing down on. Like are you getting getting more comfortable with it now. Yeah, the parries. No, not necessarily. Like I said, I think it's just the fact that I'm maybe trying to parry less and just block. And again, just being more powerful. It's not as much of a hindrance. Not just sitting here dying to these enemies. Um, of course, for me, it's the most fun actually exploring these places, uh, and I'm I'm closing in on the end of this game, so I have started going back to, I, I think I've got access to like five planets, so I've been going back and kind of cleaning up now that I have, it looks like all the skills, or at least all the skills I need to traverse an environment and actually get through any locked passages or any closed off passages, so I've been going back and cleaning up the the maps. I think I've got like 100% on two of the five planets. So my plan is just to keep doing that and then get back to the story stuff because it looks like it's right at the end. I think I'm like about 20, 20 hours in, something about that. So yeah, probably like right there because I think you and I talked about that it it's... Yeah, it's like 20 to 30. Kind of the same length as like uh, the uh, Marvel Spider-Man uh for PS4 and PS5 that kind of that like action adventure 20 hour time frame is kind of a, a, a really good like um, a sweet spot for, for those type of games. Yeah. And beyond that uh, did have a stellar unlock in Microsoft solitaire collection. Big news. <laughs> All right. I've well, been, that... I have just two achievements left in that game. Let me rephrase that. I had just two achievements left in that game. One of them is to reach level 200, which is a real, real long grind. I'm like level 150 or something right now. And, you know, I just play this game basically restroom breaks. Basically restroom breaks at work or just restroom breaks here at the house. Um, and I've really been focusing in on Spider Solitaire. That level 200 achievement is for reaching level 200 in one of the five solitaire games included. And, you know, of course, I could do it in all of them, but that'd be forever. So you want to focus yeah. in on one. So I focused in on Spider Solitaire just because I think that was the one that was, I won't, well, not most unfamiliar to me of the batch they have, but it was just the one I was enjoying the most. It actually probably t- takes the longest time per game. So it's maybe not the one you want to choose whenever you're going for that max level, but it's the one I was enjoying the most. I was like, I'll do this one. Well, one, the other achievement I lacked was getting an expert dash badge in spider solitaire. And an expert dash is awarded for completing like an expert level challenge, basically like the level four of five, actually four of four challenge in their uh, daily rotating games. Uh, the game selection rotates each day, and so it's just a random smattering of, hey, here's all Spider Solitaire matches, or hey, here's a mix of all the five different game types. And so one of the things was, okay, well, i got to wait for there to be an expert-level Spider Solitaire game for me to play, and then B, whenever it is there, then I have to beat it in five minutes or less. And Spider Solitaire is pretty tough. It is the longest of the games, and so I've just been kind of hounding myself like okay, there's one. This, there's one today. I need to need to try that next bathroom break. Next time I use the restroom, and like really just getting getting the right mindset. Like okay, I'm gonna go for. It. I'm gonna do it, and then it winds up taking you know, like six minutes, or I just get stumped and can't even finish it. So it's like okay, dude, I've done that for a couple weeks. It seems like, and it's just like okay, after I get the level 200 achievement, if I if I don't get it before then, I'm just gonna have to cheese it. I'm just gonna have to wait for somebody to post a guide on how to do it, do that day's match, and just cheese it 
Yeah. But no. Well. I did it. I did it this last week, and incredibly, I finished the game in four minutes, 59 seconds. I had one second to spare, and I actually got it. So, well, congratulations. Uh, thank you. I'll be able to – I completed that legitimately. I'll be able to complete this game legitimately unless I die, you know, in the next, like, six months or however long it's going to take me to get these last 50 levels. Well, <clears throat> so if, if you know, if, if, we're, if we're including uh, the, the, the Microsoft uh, Solitaire collection, um, I have also been playing the Microsoft uh, – Sudoku uh, Damn, before son. before going to sleep, so um, <clears throat> so that, I have I I I've, I've played three different things technically over for yeah. the last week. Yeah, I usually don't. I you know, like I said, I've I've been playing this solitaire game for a long time. I don't include it, but this was just something where it's like, <laughs> okay, this is worth noting. That's uh, for the, for the most part, like to to try to help kind of unwind and really get myself like actually like ready for bed. Um, you know, pulling up some Sudoku puzzles or uh, just a, a good way to just kind of tire the brain out. Yeah. Um, I, I have so. seen you play some of that, and it's like, okay, that's going to be next on my list. I've wanted to start it, but I thought <laughs> I'd better just finish Solitaire. That way I don't have two of these, like, you know, kind of time waster, little puzzle sort of games going on. Like, let me just finish this one all together and then move on to Sudoku. And it, it's... It's a it's a little bit of the achievement chasing too. Um, I, I I know um, Sudoku, Solitaire, and and I think Wordament are three like Android games that you can play to get achievements for your uh, your uh, gamer tag or your Xbox profile. Um, so. For the most part, like I've I've been introduced to all three of them because I'm like, oh, I can, I can play these games and get achievements. That that's really cool. Yeah, still um, novel to be like, I can get achievements on a non Xbox device or non PC. Yeah, um, and hope I I would I would love to see more of that. But you know, with Microsoft pushing Game Pass and being able to play Game Pass on your phone, it's not, it, it's probably not a main like. I don't think it was ever a focal point for them, but I don't think there's really anybody that's really pushing for that in in Microsoft now because they're like, people can can get Game Pass and play it on their phone and get achievements through actual Xbox games. True. Yeah, I mean, there has been a number of games in the past that had achievement support on Android and even date back to Windows phones. Oh, yeah, that uh, uh, back when Microsoft made phones. Yeah, and so the and the last little thing I will mention was, uh, you know, I'm I said I brought home my childhood CRT TV, thinking I may uh, play Suikoden and Tactics on it, and and you did not. I, well, no, of course not, because now <laughs> I've started thinking about playing Eternal Sonata. Next week it'll be a different JRPG. Oh, okay. That I won't uh, play. Pr- probably uh, F- Ephemeral Fantasia, another. Uh, what was that? <laughs> Ephemeral Fantasia. You joke, but that's one of the games I tested my <laughs> PS2 on with the CRT oh TV. You God. joke. Oh my God! Like that. that <laughs> just, <clears throat> so, I I was I was trying to just like stay within that vein of like Eternal Sonata with like a, a kind of like a, a musical RPG type thing, and and of of course of maybe course. yeah maybe that's why I was thinking of Eternal Sonata. I just had this like a. Uh, unconscious connection between the two hey another musical jrpg now now that i think about it did ha, you have you played that uh, F- ephemeral fantasia ephemeral fantasia no yeah. not beyond okay. just not beyond maybe like a half hour or hour long session checking it out and this was way back in high school i remember checking it out being like oh these controls are garbage like this sucks <laughs> and then i checked it out again like a couple of years ago and i was like I don't know what I was thinking. These controls are fine. Like, so I don't know if I was still in the vein of using, um, uh, what is it? The controls where, you know, you look up and you go Um, up or you inverted. Inverted. Yeah. I don't know if my brain was just twisted by inverted controls or something. And that was what was killing me or what. But I, whenever I played it a couple of years ago, just checking it out again, I was like, this is totally fine. I don't, I don't don't know what I was thinking. It, It was, it, you know, you were then looking at it as this is a this is a fine 
early PS2 RPG. It's like, damn, um, these visuals are vibing with me right now. I love these blocky ass PS2 Dreamcast <laughs> graphics. That's uh, it, that's just the way they were back then. Colorful too. Um, Jeez, colorful. Yeah, and and not only were they col- colorful, but you didn't have to worry about anything just blending into the background either. Yeah, not uh, fuzzy. Maybe a little fuzzy on the aliasing, but not fuzzy characters. Yeah, like everything was technically crystal clear, just blocky and polygonal. Yeah, well, um, not not so crystal clear on the CRT TV as I found out. Um, um, yeah. So so I did mention as well that I originally took the PlayStation 2 over to my parents' house before I got it because I figured, okay, I'll check it out before taking it. You know, maybe I want to just leave it up in the attic and not bring it. Um, but I had, for some reason, wrapped 32X AV cables around the PS2 power supply, so I couldn't test it out there. I had to bring it home. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I continued whenever I got home, settled in. I went back to the tote where I had that PS2, the Slim PS2, and the power supply, and I was like, okay, well, the AV cables have got to be in here somewhere, right? Wrong. They weren't in there. So What did then you do I was, with them? I, I don't know. That's the thing. It's like, okay, I have no idea. Um, I mean, you 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 are like super organized. Yeah, you've got boxes for everything. I mean, I got that stuff listed in an Excel that says where the location is, <laughs> and and you've probably got the receipt to tack on to that purchase, so you know the store you got it, the time no. you got it. No, I actually don't remember where I got my Slim PS2. I may have gotten it off eBay, but I mean, yeah, I don't remember, but. Anyway, so then it's like, okay, well, I have a fat PS2. I have the original PS2, and I've got it in a display box up on the bookcase. Let me go to that because generally I'll also have a, a system and its related cables or a controller in the box. So I go up to that fat PS2, and I check its box, and what do you know? I have a set of component cables in that box. Oh, uh, I, I think... Didn't you have component cables for the for the PSP to play on your TV? Right, but those are separate connectors. You know, the, oh, well, the yeah, PlayStation, sure. yeah. I think PlayStation 1, 2, and 3 all have their uh, the Sony's proprietary AV cable, and then PSP had something different. But yeah. mentioning that, you know, the fact that the PS1, PS2, and PS3 all had the same proprietary AV cable then made me remember... I also bought component cables for the PS3, so I technically already had component cables for the PS2. <laughs> so you basically you just ran yourself in, into loops trying to find the certain type of AV and then realizing, oh, yeah, I could have used these instead. Yeah, I don't even need the CRT TV. Technically, I could have been playing, I could have played this, the PS2 on our you know, main TV because it has component inputs, but... Anyways, I had the CRT TV here. I still wanted to test it. I at least want to see how it does. So then I went to the PlayStation 1 box on display. Because, okay, let me see. If I don't have AV PlayStation cables in the PS2 box, maybe I got them in the PS1. Finally, there was a set of uh, RCA connectors, just normal, you know, yellow, white, red cables. And yeah. tested it out and played a couple games. And it's it's fuzzy. It's you know probably not the great TV anyways. You know, it's an old TV that I got for Christmas one year, so it was probably, you know, inexpensive, not a great image quality. It seems like it'll be fine in most games, but one of the games I played was uh, Castle Shikigami 2, you know, a shoot 'em up, and it had some real fine, real small font work text, and it was kind of hard to read that. Okay, well, I mean, it, I. I uh... I was gonna say if, if the if the fuzziness was similar to Harvestella, but I, you you haven't played that demo. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it it the TV would probably be great, especially for older older games. Like when we're talking like pixel art, the the sort of stuff where it's gonna like blend together. Um, and like, like I said, honestly, the, most PS2 games would probably be fine on it. Most of those like that era games will probably be fine because I think they all had you know large text in most cases to compensate for that. Because I remember whenever we made the transition from standard def TVs to high def TVs, that was always a complaint about those like first generation 360 and PS3 games. Is like the, why the text is too small. I can't read this. Well, and you it, know that's and it was uh, because high definition TVs. Yeah, of course. You know there are, there's other things like you know Final Fantasy 14 having that issue with the text. Um, 
and I think Divine Forces demo also had some issues with with that. So oh yeah, yeah. I mean it's it's still an issue, but now it's just <laughs> now it's now they don't really have that excuse to fall back on. Now it's like hey, why can't you make this larger? Yeah, it's like you can do better at this point. Which I guess you know in in a lot of cases probably some of that can be traced back to the fact that well there's a PC version and you know we have to compensate for the fact that people are going to be sitting like a foot away from their monitor. But I don't think there's a PC version of Star Ocean, right? Um, it's just home consoles. I, I I think it's just home consoles. Um, I'm honestly not sure, but I did hear somebody or not hear. Um, I I read somewhere that uh, like Tri Ace is using an engine that they haven't really. I, I guess like a, a, I guess the engine was originally from the PS3 360 era. And that they've just continued to use that that engine. Oh, um, yeah. So you know, it could be like the engine that um, the Last Hope was built on, even going back that far. Yeah. So it it could be a, a situation where like obviously Square Enix doesn't want to pour a whole lot of money into this, and well, Triace is having some some financial woes, so they're probably stuck continuing to use that engine. Um, so it could very well just be a bunch of those circumstances, but. Um, I, I feel like they, um, let me see, I'm, I'm checking to see if, okay, so yeah, uh, Star Ocean, the Divine Force is coming to Windows, um, mm. through Steam and Epic Game Store, but, okay. um, but I, I can't remember where I saw the thing where they were supposedly using the same engine, but, you know, that's, if they are using the same engine, one, it is, it cannot possibly be optimized for even ps4 xbox one yeah um, i mean it may be the same engine you know just with lots of upgrades just a, a, a lot of patchwork to make it uh yeah because i mean they've made run. a ton of they've made a ton of games between then and now uh, I, I don't know about a ton of games but the, i mean they they did uh, the last hope and the faithlessness and integrity whatever integrity and faithlessness um their their mobile game I, well i mean okay so yeah I, I guess they have been kind of like a, a support team for a lot of um a, a lot of other games so they should have that experience to be able to you know make their engine last a little bit longer but um kind of when, when you think about it I, I think like unreal engine has gone through three iterations since the the ps3 360 era um because I, I think there's like Unreal Engine three, and then there's four during the the PS4 Xbox One time frame, and then they're rolling out. Or I think they've already rolled out uh, Unreal Engine five. Um, so just kind of looking at the span of how long an engine has has been used, I, I kind of wonder if, um, you know, just how long they've been using this engine yeah i guess i would wonder if wherever you saw that if it's something where it's you know like to an outsider you may look at unreal engine and say oh well it's the fifth version so does that mean it's a whole new thing or is it just an upgrade on the last version you know is it really like okay well try ace's game engine you know they call it the same name but it's really a completely different engine Oh, well, I, I just now looked it up, and apparently Tri-Ace used Unreal Engine 4 for the Divine Force, so wherever I saw the the, the thing of uh, them using the same, well, I mean... Can't trust a damn word you say. Yeah, that's... Uh, so for the most part, I, I don't know where... I, I can't remember where I, I, I saw that, but... Um, but yeah, like Unreal Engine 4, let's see, when did that... When did they launch that? On on the fly we're reporting right now. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, that just gives me the original. Okay, so the original Unreal Engine launched May twenty second, nineteen ninety eight. That's not what I was looking up. I was looking up the Unreal Engine four release date, and it took me there. So, uh, not going to waste any more time looking for that. Well, um, that helps me know um, because my wife and I were talking about that uh, last night, even. What? Yeah, I, you know, sometimes she asks questions like, Unreal Engine, how long has that been around? Which is, which is literally what happened whenever we saw the, the Unreal Engine splash screen on Jedi Fallen Order. 
And then I, I said, mean, uh, probably like the mid to late 90s. You know, basically it was the engine for the first Unreal game. And then they spun off Unreal Tournament. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, it's... Uh, you and I are very much in sync without knowing that we're we're in sync of just uh, you know I I had no idea that you had that conversation uh, just last night and also just the ephemeral Fantasia thing and yeah just, yeah you know uh, we we know each other pretty well um, so do you think uh, well I, I guess you're you're you said that you're close to wrapping up uh star wars the, the fallen order um all right fallen star wars jedi fallen order Aha, yeah that one um, yeah i so, don't i don't know if i'll be able to wrap it all up by this time next week or not um and even if i do i don't really know what i'm going to jump into next well we're kind of in that waiting period where it's like okay well i can't start anything too substantial just because star ocean is on the horizon yeah, um, and that's kind of you know, I, I I mean, if some of my like game time starts to open up a little bit more over this week, I, I mean, I'm probably still not going to be beating Yakuza Like a Dragon um, within this week, but be I, I'm hoping to be pretty close to it because yeah, like, like I said, you know, earlier in this in this episode, just uh, I'm really hoping to be able to finish this game before the divine force comes out so that i'm not putting this game on on the the back burner again again um because it is it it is such a fantastic game um and i really well well I, i just briefly thought i might be able to play them both at this like on and off like play yakuza like a dragon on the ps5 and since i'm getting the divine force on on the series x be able to like okay well i'm you know not really having to like change out discs or anything and i don't know but having having two substantial rpgs that that, that just not a good combination to to try to do at the same time um but like i said i do i do intend on being fairly close i, I think with uh yakuza like a dragon i'm almost done like i said i'm, I'm about halfway through chapter 10 um a lot of the the loose ends are starting to kind of like I'm starting to see how they're going to wrap up, so I'm I'm feeling pretty good that uh, maybe maybe about a, about two weeks I, I might have that game beaten. So like just Perfect in time timing. for for the the Divine Force. Um, what I'm curious to see is that once Star Ocean comes out, because for you there is Pokemon right around the corner after the divine force um and i know you're you're getting both versions I, like there's there's no shock or surprise there well but I mean, one for me one for my wife well yeah but yeah i, mean, I, I don't mean, buy two versions i mean yeah it's you, you'll you'll make the most out of, out of both of them um but i think you know for for you depending on how long the the divine force is because i don't think i don't think anything has been reported yet on how like what the speculation is on, on the length of that game but i'm kind of curious to see you know i i don't i don't see you beating the game in in two weeks and i think that's about the time frame in between the divine force releasing and and pokemon releasing so i'm, I'm kind of curious to see just how you'll you'll juggle juggle those uh, um i don't know let's see what uh Star Ocean comes out what October or something? October twenty seventh. October twenty seventh, and then what does Pokemon Scarlet and Violet come out on? They come out November eighteenth. So yeah, it'll be a little bit more than two weeks, two and a half weeks. All right. So, um, but you know, it could be with with us both playing the Divine Force uh, side by side. We, well, I, I don't know if we'll have. I don't know if that'll be an added motivation to just like try to play through as much as we can well as quickly as well, possible well before yeah. you start thinking about my situation you need to think about your situation you got yakuza yeah 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 i mean and yeah i probably chances are i won't have star ocean completed by the time pokemon comes out um especially at the rate i'm I, you know i'm averaging like what 
maybe 15 hours of game time a week charitably maybe 10 yeah. or so um so Probably. definitely definitely won't have it beat but i think it may be the same thing uh where you're like speculating oh well i could play both yakuza and starship at the same time because they're kind of different consoles different things <laughs> yeah. um you know yeah. pokemon is pokemon is such a thing where like i can totally just play that in the background almost you know granted this is a new game so i will want to pay attention to stuff but all the changes and stuff that they make yeah it still is probably something where you know okay well it's not eating into my star ocean time per se because i could be playing it while sitting on the couch doing like watching television or something um so yeah i I think as as far as you know not exactly an exciting episode you know considering that we're still kind of talking about the same games but we've made progress we've made progress not exciting what are you we talked about solitaire is there anything more exciting than solitaire? <laughs> solitaire and and Sudoku and there were there was a mention of, of Wordament, uh, which is like that. It's kind of like a Scrabble type of game. Um, I mean, hell, we talked about CRT TVs, the like hooking Musical, up a PS2, JRPGs. testing out like whether or not to to take a TV from an attic back back to your place. Um, I mean, we, 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 we really knocked it out of the park, I think, as far as, like, an exciting episode for people to really sink their teeth into. Um, and, I mean, I, I guess in, with, with the, the talk of Harvestella, with that demo, um, I, I, I think my, my thoughts on it now is I'll, I'll wait and see. I was a little bit on the fence of being like, oh, I might pick this up. You know, it seems like this might be good to kind of play in handheld mode because I was kind of wanting something for the Switch that would fit more of a, like, on-the-go type of thing. Something that, you know, could have meaty uh, mechanics and gameplay to it that I could take with me to, you know, to work or whatever and, you know, kind of play on my break and stuff. But after, after you know, dabbling with the, the demo, um, now I'm just kind of like, ah, I, I, can, I can wait for, for that to go on sale i can i can wait for reviews and how other people are reacting to it um yeah instead like, of managing a virtual house and farm you need to focus on buying a real house and farm <laughs> yeah yeah which that's um we i have been uh well we we have been looking at so many different houses like what like i told you earlier today we went out to that one uh one house that was doing an open house between two and four um so yeah, we've we have been just aggressively looking. We still have about a month left on, on the lease here, about a month and a half left. Um, so still not like right at the we have to make a decision now phase. Um, but yeah, we've been looking at a lot of houses. I think I, I think we've notched it up to thirty houses. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's honestly whenever we were buying our house that's probably how many we looked at um and yeah it's it it is for the most part like we've we've we're really starting to get a a really good idea of like what what we want uh things to look for um and it it's it's been fun also a little stressful trying to figure out well okay well how much money are we going to need for this? And how much money are we going to need for that? And what what's going to happen with this? And are they going to help out with closing costs? And blah blah blah. Um, so it, it's it very quickly shifts from like uh, like excitement and happy to just like oh god, this is going to be a lot of money. Yeah, I mean for me it was honestly <laughs> just a lot of dread, being like, okay, can we flo- can we float this? Is this going to work out? And then after it's all said and done, it's like oh yeah, okay, we can do this. Because yeah, like. Uh, uh, the, the the way that I see it, and the, and the way that I've I've been kind of looking at it, uh, you know, th- this is this is the uh, homeowner slash future homeowner uh, corner of the just one more podcast. It's it's a brand new segment. Um, like one thing that, that that I've been looking at is for a, a five to six years, I've been renting. We've been putting money into the pockets of just companies property companies um not putting any of that money into actually owning something for the future um 
So being able to take what would be a monthly rent payment and turn that into a monthly house payment, which is something that we would then own, um, a much better investment. Much, much better investment. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that because like right now uh, we pay uh, like eight hundred and thirteen dollars a month. If I can put that towards owning a house, much better. Um, and just you know, yeah. Anyway, so uh, so yeah, for the for this week, you know, just kind of wrapping everything up uh, for this week. Uh, we're gonna be doing more with Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, obviously, looking at more houses. Um, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed that that you do beat. Uh, Star Wars this this week, um, and it's Jedi Fallen Order, right? Yeah, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Okay. Um, and who knows? Maybe you'll surprise us, and you'll be like, "Hey, we talked about it. I'm I'm playing Eternal Sonata." Actually, I think I'm kind of moving on to where I want to play Infinite Undiscovery <laughs> instead. Oh uh, well, I mean that's. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, early Xbox 360 JRPGs, and, um, and developed by Triace as well. Yeah, um, man, I forgot about Infinite Undiscovery. That that was a, <laughs> that was a fun time. That was a fun time. Um, now that I think about, okay, so this this will be like the extended edition for uh, for just one more podcast. Um, like Triace is a developer that I really enjoyed because not only are they the brain, the, the, the company, the, the developers behind Star Ocean, which is one of my you know, beloved franchises. Which, I, uh, I don't know, it's one of your beloved franchises or it's just one of your beloved games because you're really smitten with Till the End of Time. Well, I mean, I, I, I liked uh, you know the first game. I liked the second game. I adore and love Till the End of Time. Last Hope rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I didn't play uh, Star Ocean 5, but Star Ocean 6, even with the demo, like Harvest Della's demo has kind of made me lukewarm towards that. The Divine Forces demo, not quite what I was expecting, but I'm still getting it day one. But with Tri-Ace, uh, they did also do Radiata Stories for the PlayStation 2. Um, which is another RPG that I that I love, and the main character for Radiata Stories reminds me a lot of the main character in Infinite Undiscovery, as far as that like very uh, just kind of disjointed, sarcastic, uh, just really they're they're egotistical in different ways. Like like one is. A, is an optimist in Radiata Stories. Uh, I, I think his name's Jack. Um, and the protagonist in Infinite Undiscovery is more of like a pessimist. But they both have this like ego structure about them that everything seems to be centered around them. Or it, like with Infinite Undiscovery, the the main character thinks that if anything bad happens, it's because they're they're trying to to. You know, hurt him. It has something to do about him. With Radiata Stories, the, the main protagonist, it he if something uh, you know great happens, it's because of him. He he's the reason. So, but uh, I, I guess for the most part, you could end up surprising us and playing Lost Odyssey again. I don't I don't know. Yeah. Like or Blue Dragon. I, actually, that is another one I've thought of. I've basically just gone through the list of, okay, what 360 RPGs do I have in our backwards compatible? Oh, well, let me see. Eternal Sun is not, but that wouldn't stop me. Um, so, yeah, like... Uh, I, Magna I'm, Carta 2? I'm, <laughs> Deep I'm, Cut? I'm, I'm, now, I'm now curious to see if you, if you surprise... Uh, what potential surprise could be for the next episode. Yes, which let me go ahead and clarify the re- for the record. Magna Carta 2 is not a JRPG. I guess it's technically a KRPG. I think it was a South Korean game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I remember the first game hit uh, the PS2, but then the sequel hit the 360. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think people liked the first game. I don't know about the second game. 
Um, but with that being said, uh, this wild ride of a uh, podcast, um, I am Jeff from Just One More Level. And this was John from MyBrainOnGames.com. And we will be back with episode 14. Yeah, episode 14 of Just One More Podcast next week. So see you, everybody. Bye-bye.